Once I decided I wanted to use a controller for beat making and controlling my DAW, the hunt was on to find the perfect controller. After much debate, when selecting a controller that can provide me with a set of pads for creating beats, providing some control over my DAW, I decided on the Novation Launchpad Pro Mark III. How did I evaluate my choices? What were my options? Why did I finally decide on the Novation Launchpad Pro Mark III? What are its features and how do you use them? All of this and more are coming up right now on this episode of Pro Music Creator. This video is the first in a series of videos covering all of the features of the Launchpad Pro. Before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome and thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Ramirez and this is Pro Music Creator, where we all become pros at producing and making music together. By the end of this video series, hopefully we'll all be pros at the art of using the Novation Launchpad Pro Mark III to create, produce, and perform music. So, if you wish to learn everything there is to know about the Novation Launchpad Pro, stay tuned by subscribing to this channel and turning on the notifications so that you'll be alerted each time I post a new video in this series. There are many options in the market today when it comes to controllers. Some include a keyboard with a piano keybed ranging from 25 keys all the way up to 88 keys. Others include a grid of pads ranging from 16 pads to 64 pads, and some even include a combination of both. In this set of videos, I am strictly concentrating on grid-based controllers and more specifically, the Innovation Launchpad Mark III. Before we go and jump into the details of the Launchpad, let me list out some of the choices I contemplated. First and foremost, my current Novation Launch Key Mark II currently sports a set of keypads right on it. And I contemplated simply using it or upgrading it to the Launch Key Mark III and sticking with that. However, there were a few missing features I couldn't live without. I'll list out my requirements shortly. I also contemplated some of the other keyboard controllers with pads on them that are currently on the market, such as the Arteria or the Akai keyboards. So why didn't I pick any of these? Well, I really wanted something with more than just eight pads. 16 or more was my preference. Also, at the time I was evaluating the list of controllers, I was using Apple Logic Pro as my DAW. So I wanted something that could integrate nicely with that DAW and take advantages of its native features. I considered the native instrument Machine Mark III, but it seemed like its workflow just wasn't working right for me. For one, I wanted to take advantage of the Live Loops feature in the Logic Pro, and the Novation Launchpad seemed to offer a closer integration similar to what both Logic Pro Live Loops offers as well as what Ableton Session View offers. For these reasons, I decided to go with the Novation Launchpad, and I have to say that I am happy about that decision. About a month after I received it and began to play with it, I became intrigued to look further into the integration between Novation Launchpad and Ableton Live. After spending some time evaluating the two together, I decided to take the plunge and I moved away from Apple Logic Pro and I am now on Ableton Live Suite Edition. If you'd like to know more about how I evaluated that decision, drop me a comment below and I'll provide you some details or maybe I'll even create a video about it. I can tell you that I don't regret the decision. In fact, I may even upgrade my Novation Launchpad Mark III to an Ableton Push 2 in the future, but that's content for another video down the line if I decide to pursue that avenue. The Launchpad Pro is right at home when accompanied by the Ableton Live software. 
although it works with many of the other DAWs right out of the box. As I mentioned earlier, I originally purchased it because I wanted to use it to control Apple Logic. When combined with Logic, about 95% of all the buttons provide a function in Logic that makes sense. There are one or two buttons that won't do anything in Logic because they were purpose-built to support Ableton. Launchpad also has a built-in sequencer which allows it to be used directly with hardware synths without the use of a computer. During this series of videos, I want to try and break down everything I've learned and I'm still in the process of learning about the Launchpad Pro. I hope that these videos will provide the videos that I was looking for when I tried to learn how to use the Launchpad Pro. Hopefully these videos will provide some help to someone out there. If I'm going to provide the details for all of the features of the Launchpad Pro, I'll need to break down all of the features into several videos. I'll be following the format and content order provided by the Novation Launchpad Pro's manual. So consider this to be the video version of that manual for this wonderful little device. In case you're wondering, the Launchpad Pro is about 10.5 inches by 10.5 inches and about a half inch thick. It weighs next to nothing, but it feels pretty solid. As for the pads, they feel responsive, durable, and large enough to easily separate them from each other, making them easy to play without accidentally hitting the wrong pad. From what I can tell, the Launchpad Pro was originally built to support Ableton Live and the external hardware sense via the built-in sequencer. In addition to creating and managing clips directly in Launchpad, you can also use it during live performances. When we tackle the sequencer portion of the Launchpad later in the series, you'll also see that Novation built probability and mutation features into the Launchpad, along with its custom modes and the ability to send out MIDI to any piece of hardware via the included ports. This controller is pretty powerful as a standalone controller, either in the studio or for live performances. Let's look at the primary features of the Launchpad first. The Launchpad has some of the best Ableton Live features directly integrated, including the ability to play, record, and produce tracks directly on the Launchpad without having to turn to a computer mouse or a keyboard. The Launchpad offers 64 pressure sensitive pads. These pads are RGB based and change colors for various purposes. They're also very musically expressive. The Launchpad also provides a four track sequencer that offers eight note polyphonic 32 step patterns, scenes for arrangements and probability, and mutation controls for all of your tracks. There is also an onboard chord mode that allows you to play complex chords right on the grid. You can find and build harmonies, save them so you can recall them later and capture them in your performances. The Launchpad also has a note mode, which can be used to play notes and scales in any key. This means that you can select the key and then anything you build, such as a bass line or a melody, will have notes made up from that given key. Also, there's a tight integration between the drum rack in the DAW and the Launchpad grid. When your drumming Launchpad Pro changes the grid to reflect the drum rack as it appears inside the DAW. As already mentioned, the Launchpad can operate as a standalone sequencer and control hardware instruments via its MIDI out ports of which it has two. The Launchpad Pro also contains a MIDI import as well for times when you need to control various features via MIDI from an external device or software. Finally, Eight custom modes allow you to use Novation components to customize MIDI mappings to meet your unique performance needs. When you first open your Launchpad's box, you'll find the following items included. The Launchpad Pro, a USB-C to USB-A cable, a USB-C to USB-C cable, the USB-A power adapter along with a few plugs that can be used in different parts of the world depending on where you are, and three TRS MIDI jacks to DIN MIDI adapters. Getting the launch pad up and running on your computer is fairly easy. On a Mac, you'll simply plug in and a folder named Launchpad will appear on the desktop. You can click on Get Started within the folder. If you're running the Chrome browser on your computer, you may also see a Launchpad Pro Mark III detected message appears, which will also launch the Get Started process. In either case, just follow the instructions on the Get Started pages that follow. 
On a Windows computer, you'll plug in the Launchpad and find the drive named Launchpad Pro that appears in your Windows Explorer after you plug in the Launchpad Pro. Go to that drive and click on the Get Started shortcut and then follow the instructions. In order to test the waters and kick the tires around, you can visit the Launchpad intro page by visiting intro.novationmusic.com. This page will allow you to trigger sounds from the Launchpad's grid. You'll need a Web MIDI enabled browser such as Chrome or Opera. Before continuing, if you're finding some value in this video, it would absolutely help out the channel if you would click the like button. Your support is much appreciated and goes a long way towards helping and sharing this content with others. Now that the launch pad is connected to your computer, we've taken care of the hardware side of things. Now it's time to take care of the software side. If you are using Ableton Live, it should automatically recognize the launch pad upon the next launching of the software and it'll place the launch pad into session mode. But in case it doesn't, you might need to access the Ableton Live's preferences and ensure that the launch pad is selected as a controller and turn on the appropriate options as I've shown here. As I mentioned earlier, if you're using Apple Logic Pro, Launchpad works well with it. The integration is very intuitive. There is even a link with more information about integrating Logic with the Launchpad on Novation's website. I've included the link down below in the description for your convenience. The page on the Novation site contains videos for working with Logic in case you're interested. I can't speak for any of the other DAWs as I haven't tried them. If you've used the Novation Launchpad Pro Mark III with other DAWs such as Pro Tools, Studio One, or FL, please share your experience with us below in the comments section. In this video series, I'll be using Ableton Live as my DAW, but most of what I'll be showing also applies to Logic users. Besides, I'll be concentrating on the Launchpad Pro side of things, so all of this information will definitely apply to more than just Ableton Live. I'll also be covering how to use the Launchpad as a standalone sequencer. This is where you'll need to use the included wall plug to power up the Launchpad since we're assuming that you'll be using the Launchpad in standalone mode without access to a computer to power up the Launchpad. So if you don't want to miss the remaining videos in this series, make sure you click on the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you won't miss any. Thanks and see you next time.